if that's your motto, hey, if you've seen God do it once, if you've seen God do it twice, five times, come on, he'll do it again, and again, and again, and again, God is faithful, God is powerful, God is on time, God will do it again, hey, he'll never fail you. Lord, amen. Praise the Lord. Woo! That's my anthem right there, amen. God, I need you to do it again. God, I'm going through something right now. I need you to do it again. God, I, I'm going through a trial right now. I need you to do it again. God, I, I, there's a, a financial need in my life. I need you to do it again. God, there's a prayer request. There's a family member. There's a person of interest that, God, I need you to do it again. Let's give it up for the worship team. Come on, amen. We'll bring it every. How many know that it's been a, man, a, a powerful month? Man, this, it's just been nonstop, amen. You know, this is the messages, the word, everything has been on time. The will to win. How many have that will to win? How many, how many know that you're a winner? You may not feel like winner right now, but I want you just to praise him. You may not feel like it, but I want you to just put your hands together. Pastor, I just lost yesterday, but hey, come on. I'm a winner. A winner in Christ. Right now, I want you to go ahead and grab your Bibles. And as you turn with me to Philippians chapter 3, and Pastor has been in this scripture right here, and I just want to stay in that main vein. Come on, amen. Some of you OGs know about that, right? Staying in the vein. Come on, amen. I'm going to stay in that main vein right there. I want to you know, take this top opportunity to thank our, our pastors. How many love your pastor, amen? Let's keep him in prayer, amen, as he's there preaching there in Chino. I know he's going to just tear it up, amen. So let's just pray. Father God, we come before your mighty name. We pray for your word. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do today. And Lord... Give us that will to win, my God, that endurance in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, if you have it, I'm reading from the King James Version right here. Going old school on you. In the King James Version of 314, it says, I press towards the mark. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You can have your seat at this time. This morning, I want to talk to you about winners leave a mark. Winners leave a mark. We know last week, Pastor talked about a famous runner, right, who broke the four-minute mile. And he left a mark in sports history. I want you to think of an athlete, your favorite superstar, your favorite athlete, your favorite player on the team. When I was growing up, it was Joe Montana. Come on, amen. And Michael Jordan. Come on, amen. Those are legends. They left a mark. Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, you know, all, all the famous Babe Ruth, man, all the famous from, from the time it started to, to nowadays, they're leaving a mark. But how about Dr. Martin Luther King? Come on, amen. He left a mark. Gandhi, how about, no, we know, uh, you know, Jesus. Come on, amen. Jesus left a mark. Moses left a mark. Come on. How many know that David Wilkerson left a mark? <laughs> Billy Graham left a mark. Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie are leaving a mark. Even our pastors, Pastor Alan and Sister Georgina, are leaving a mark. They left marks and they're leaving more marks, amen. And so today I want to talk about I press towards the mark. This past weekend, I don't know, maybe many of you, it's been, it's been crazy hot, amen. Might as well just address the elephant in the room. But how many thank God that we have a, a, a cool church, amen, with a bunch of cool people, and a cool sanctuary, amen. And if some of you guys complain, turn the AC down, but now you're like, hey, turn it up. 
But that weekend before this, now it was it was blazing. So we went to the beach. How many of you guys been to the beach recently? Come on, amen. The, even the beach water is hot, amen. <laughs> and so uh, we took the family to the beach. We got on the beach, and 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 what I love about my son is that he was scared of the water. He didn't want to even go in the ocean water because he saw some shark movies. He saw some, you know, the the, the Shark Week, <laughs> and he didn't want to go in the water no more. And so finally, man, now he spends hours in the ocean. He loves the ocean. He, he you know, he, he got a boogie board, and we're, he's on the boogie board now. And so I got in the water with him, and I began to teach him how to boogie board. Come on, amen. I might, I might put him in surfing school. I don't know. We're in San Diego anyways. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm teaching him how to feel the wave and feel the motion of the wave and to take the, you know, to take the wave. And, you know, he, he caught a few, he, he caught a couple, and. And then I, I taught him also this very important lesson. I said, hey, look back. I said, like, do you see a building? You need a mark. You need to mark where you are at. So when the tide comes, and when the tide will come, you know where to look for your mark. Pick a building. Pick a, 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 you know, a, a tower. Pick an umbrella. But pick a mark before you get into the water. Because how many know that tide comes and that tide will take you away from your mark? And this morning, we can start off strong in the faith. We can start off strong with, with the Lord. We can start off, man, you know, strong. We, man, we're excited. We're blessed. Man, God is, man, I'm filled with the joy of the Lord. We can start off that way. But how many know sometimes we begin to drift? Away from those things that once was that mark on our lives. That thing that kept our focus, that thing that kept our eyes straight is now we're drifting away. So I had to, you know, so I, you know, we, we got away, man. We got, we got quite a, a far away. I said, hey, remember the mark. Remember the mark. But see, this God of ours, this loving Father, the Lord Jesus is a loving Father. And that, and in those times... And in those times, we find ourselves drifting away, and, and we do. But that loving father points at us. He grabs us and says, son, daughter, remember the mark. Remember, remember the goal. I press towards the goal. Rem son, daughter, I love you so much. Remember that place. Remember where you came from. Remember what I did in your life. Remember where you are from. And, and, he, and he loves us. And he says to remember the mark. And he says don't forget about your purpose. Don't man, press towards the goal. Press towards the prize of the upward call of Jesus Christ. Don't you know that in a race the runners run. We don't run aimlessly. We don't run without a purpose of focus. We're fixed our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. I love the Hebrew author, and Pastor said, you know, you know, for the sake of time, it was most likely Paul the Apostle or one of his disciples. I see a, a disciple sounds just like his, his discipler, sounds just like his leader, sounds just like his pastors, sounds just like, are we speaking that same language? That's a little side note, amen. Because Apollos was so much like Paul, they sounded the same, Amen. Some say Apollos wrote it. Some say, you know, Paul wrote it. But who, whatever, man, see, we see that the, his leader, Paul, man, they sounded very similar. And, and, and I want to read the scripture in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. It says, therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away. Lest we drift away. I love the message translation. It says, it's crucial that we keep a firm grip on what we've heard so we don't drift off. What have we been hearing? What have we been listening to? What have we heard this morning? What have we heard last week? What have we heard last month? I've been hearing, and I know you've been hearing, increase, favor, and multiplication. Are you hearing the same thing? I've been hearing it's a time, it's a season to be strengthened. Have you been hearing that? Come on, amen. 
I've been hearing it's a will to win. Come on, how many know that we're winners? Do we feel the same way? Come on, I need some people to praise the Lord right now, amen. Have you been hearing that or are you hearing something else, amen? I've been, I know we've been hearing about the overflow of the Holy Spirit. I, we've, been, we've been hearing about the power and unction of the Holy Ghost, the power of God. We've been hearing about the Word of God. We've been hearing about Jesus Christ, the life, death, and resurrection of Him. Come on, amen. We've been hearing these things. We can't, we, we've been hearing about family life flow. We've been hearing, about, you know, in, in, our, in our life, we've been hearing stuff. Are we holding on to it or are we letting it go? In one ear and out the other. We can't drift away from the teachings. We can't drift away what we heard on January 1st. We can't drift away from the start. We, man, and, and if we do, and sometimes we do, can I get a real witness in this place? We have to set our eyes on that mark. Like Paul was saying, I, I set my eyes on that mark and I want to finish that race. See, we've been hearing this stuff. And we have to keep a firm group. A, a, a firm grip so we don't, man, we don't drift along. We don't live a complacent life. We don't take things for granted. Come on, I need some, some people of God in this place. We can't live nonchalantly. We can't live without purpose, like a ship without a sail, sailing aimlessly in the ocean. We need some men and women of God that says, no, I live with a purpose. Jesus Christ saved me. Jesus Christ did a work in me. I know the work. I know the plan because he did something in my life. I've heard it, and I'm holding on to it. See, Paul was a leader who never drifted from his mission. He determined to leave his mark wherever he went. He determined. Are we determined to leave our mark here in our family? Are we determined to leave our marks? And no, my grandpa was a man of God. My dad was a man of God. My mom was a man of God. When they wanted to give up, they didn't give up. Man, my pastor was a man of God. My, my, my pastor's wife was a, man of, was a woman of God. Come on, amen. Forgive me, Lord. But they are determined. Our pastors, man, they work hard. They, they are determined to leave a mark. Man, how about us? It doesn't matter our platform or our stage. Our platform may be our family. Our platform may be our children. Our platform may be our work. It doesn't matter. But we are going to leave a mark. They're going to know that David. They're going to know that Jose. They're going to know that Joe. They're going to know that we left our mark. But why do people drift? Two things. Number one, the tide of time. You know, man, our children... In the, in the children's ministry, man, they hear messages about the Lord. Amen, right? Man, the God's anointed now generation, they're hearing, man, they're getting, ooh, they're getting fired up. They're being, getting preached to, amen. You know, the young adults, us. But how many know, man, the, 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 the young kids, they hear messages after message. When they're our age, they're going to hear thousands of messages. And sometimes the tide of time can take us away. Oh, I, I've heard that before. Uh, you know, we've been there before. I've done that before. I know more than you. You, I, I should be teaching you. The tide of time. Oh, man, I don't have to be there anymore. I don't have to show up anymore. Man, no, I, you know, I, don't, you know I, I can't make it to life group tonight. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't help with this project. I, I, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm too busy right now. The tide of time. Man, you know, I, I got to work. I got to work it. I got to go to work. Got to pay the bills. Man, I, I've been in the home for, only, for six months. I'm, I'm good already. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. The tide of time can cause us to drift away. Also, the tide of trials. Woo! Anybody been through some trials? Man, that, that tide of trials is like a wave that crap. Man, man have, you ever, have you ever wiped out, man? May, maybe I'm the only boogie boarder in here. I don't know. <laughs> but, man, I've caught some waves. and I, Man, that wave of crap, boom, man, just slam me into the bottom of that sand. Amen. My God. That trial, man, that slams us. Boom. 
that's high, man, difficulties. Has difficulties caused you to drift away? Has disappointments caused you to drift away? I'm disappointed today. I'm offended today. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm the offender today. You know, I, you know, man, I caused that trial. Man, has that caused us to drift away? To say, no, I don't need to go to church. So maybe you're watching it here online and you're like, man, you don't want, you don't want to be at church because you, you're, you're drifting away. But I want to let you know something, though, watching online, that God loves you, that God has a plan for you. That doesn't matter how far you drift away, you can come back to your mark. Trials are the doorway to triumph. Woo. Lord, count it all joy. It's, it's, a lot, it's a lot easier when you're saying it than you're going through it. Come on, amen. But trials are the doorway to triumph. You have to walk through them. You got to go. You got to, man, you got to face it. You, you, you know, many times you run to alcohol. You know, many times you run to a smoke. Many times you run to a drug or a relationship. We try to case it. We try to cover it. We try to, we try to do all kinds of things, but deal with the situation and face it and go through that trial because that trial is going to lead to triumph. See, crowns are, 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 are casted in the crucible. The crowns are casted in the crucible. The, count, the, the crown that the king wears was cast in a hot place, kind of like today, amen. But, man, because of that casting, because of that trial, it caused something beautiful. It causes something great to take place. See, we will never learn faith in comfortable surroundings. Helen Keller said one time is that, you know, you know through hardships and through much Trial, you know Helen Keller, right? She was blind and deaf. My God, imagine me being born blind and deaf. She said that character is not formed in the ease of life, but it is formed in the hardships of life. And she became an inspiration. She left her mark, and she was deaf and blind. I don't see any deaf or blind in in here, amen. Many times, we, man, we 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 think we have have it the worst. But how many know we have it good right now? We have, man, God has been good to us. It doesn't matter the hardest day, God is still great. Amen. So what causes a person to get back on course to leave a mark? So remember, this is where I want to kind of zone in is that how do we leave that mark? Well, I'm going to give you three things to kind of help us in that, in, in that direction is to remember the pain, remember the promise, and to practice. See, I read this quote recently, actually a couple days ago, from George Washington Carver. He was a Christian and a scientist. He said that no individual has any right to come into this world and go out of it without leaving behind him distinct and legitimate reasons for having passed through it. See, he's talking about leaving a mark. He was talking about leaving a legacy. He was talking about leaving something for his, his family, for his kids, for also for, for the generation. See, when we win, it's not just for us. When you win in your marriage, it's not just for you. It's for your children. When you win in your family, it's not just for you. It's for your family. When you win as a leader, when you win as a disciple, it's not just for you. It's for this family right here. People are counting on us. They're, they're, man, they're, 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 egg, they're egging us on. They're, they're encouraging us. Keep it up, brother. Keep it up, sister. Don't leave the home. Don't leave the church. Don't leave the life group. Because God has something for your life. Remember the pain. Woo. Where were you when you got saved? Maybe some of you guys are in pain right now, amen, but... We're going to have a time that you can come and get touched by God, amen, by touched by his presence. Where were you when you first got saved? Were you in that drug house? Were you in that prison cell? Were you just depressed, you know, sitting in a dark room at home? Where were you? Remember the pain. Because many times we drift away because, ah, you know what, I'm not appreciated no more. I don't, I don't, you know, they don't love me no more. And Man, no, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere else. And, no, you know, forget this because... We've drifted from our mark. We've drifted from our goal. And now we're looking at our emotions. We're looking at our pain. We're looking at our own 
own self. But we don't remember the pain that we were in. We don't remember crying. We don't remember, man, our tears. We don't remember our marriage was busted. We don't remember that our kids were, man, were also busted, amen. We don't remember those things. Do you know where you were at? Remember the pain. Remember the hurt. Remember the depression where you were at. Do we remember? Where were you? Where were you? When God touched your life. When you were just grateful to come to church. When we were just mad. Where were we? Remember the pain. Remember the pain. Remember where God man, took you from. I remember, man, there's been some dark I've been through some dark things, amen. I remember there on 4th Street, 4th and 8th Street in Bakersfield, California. It's hotter over there, people, amen. Come on, man, let's go. I remember there, man, I was in a dark place. Man, my wife was doing great. She was all busy, man. She was like all kinds of, doing all kinds of stuff, amen. But I was in a dark place. I wanted to give up. Man, I, I, I was struggling in my Christianity. I was struggling in my faith. I was struggling, you know, man, with thoughts, and, 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 you know, and I wanted to give up. But, man, I, I kept on. I said, you know what, God, you haven't called me for that. I would cry out to God. I would yell in my house, God, man, what are you doing? God, where, where, where are you taking me? God, what, man, with the things I'm doing right now, I don't want to do no more, God. But I would, man, I would go to church. I would, man, get into the presence of God. I would, man, I would worship him. I said, God, whatever you want to do, let's do it. And there was another time, too, when I came back from the East Coast Training Center here to San Diego. I, mean, I love San Diego. I love this church because this church refreshed me, amen. I remember, you know, I didn't fall into sin or anything, amen. I didn't come because I, I, I blew it. You know, I wasn't the perfect director, and I wasn't the best director, but I gave it my best. I gave him my, I gave him my all. I, I whatever, I, I, I gave it. And then I, came, you know, I came here and man, this church was a refreshing to worship. My God, you don't know what you guys got right here, amen. I remember coming here, woo, man, just getting filled up. But I was still going through a rough time. I was going through a period of transition in my life. See, man, before that, you know, in Bakersfield, man, I was living in a trailer. Come on, I was living in an RV. Come on, amen, with my wife. It was hard times, man. You, man, I, I was, I, I was white trash. Come on, <laughs> I was true to my nature. Come on, amen. I was in that trailer, man. Come on, <laughs> woo. But I was there, man. It was hot too, man. It was hot, man. I, it's all good, right? I was hot, man. You know what? But we came over here. I was in a transition period. Transition's not easy. It took me a couple years. It took me two years to fully transition. I've been here for five years. It took me two years. But know what? you know where you always see me? You always see me right here, sitting right here, next to these men of God right here. Pastor Conch, you be always encouraging me, saying, hey, David, you're going to be up there one day. I didn't want to, man, I was going through stuff. I didn't want to be here, but, man, I was here at my post. I was here in my chair. I was listening to the message. I came to church. I would stand up and say, yes. I would stand up and back up my pastor. I would say, amen. I would, I, would, I, would, I would begin to walk in that. I would begin to walk and say, you know what? I may not be where I want to be, but I thank God he's taking me to where I need to be. And it doesn't matter where you're at. Remember the pain. Remember every trial. Remember every hurt. Remember everything that wanted to take you out but didn't. Because God was faithful. Come what may, God is faithful. Come on, give him a praise. See, sorrow is God's tool to plow the depths of the soul that may yield richer harvest. See, we have to remember the pain. See, also we have to remember the promise. Forgetting what lies and behind and straining toward what it lies ahead. We need to stop running to those natural resources. We need to stop running to the natural when we see ourselves drifting or wavering. But we need to run to the supernatural. We can't fully depend on the words of man, of people, but we must fully trust the word of God. See, I love Abraham. 
because he was 100 years old when he had his first kid, amen? <laughs> it's crazy. He was promised a nation. He was promised a heavy promise. Don't go for those little promises. Come on, you got you to go for the big promises. That's why God's preparing you in that pain, amen? Romans 4.18 says this, In hope Abraham believed against all hope, that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told but promised. So shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was a, as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, when he considered also the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made, uh, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew stronger in his faith as he gave glory to God. We got to give God all the glory. We got to remember the promises on your life. The promises you got there in the home. The promises you got here in church. The promises that, man, you were praying in that pain. And as you were in that pain, God gave you a word. God gave you a psalm. God gave you something to grab a hold upon. Remember that promise. Remember the word of God that was spoken into your life. Remember, God comforts us with that promise. Can I get an amen? God comforts us, but not to make us comfortable, but to comfort others. The pain that you went through and the promise that you got is to help somebody else out. Is to man, help somebody else win. Is to help somebody else leave a mark. And by you helping somebody, you're leaving a mark, amen? And the last point is this. Remember to practice. Remember to practice. In Philippians 4, 9, it says this. What you have learned and received, Paul's talking here, and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. We just got to practice. Practice showing up to church. Come on, amen. Practice giving. Practice, man, being on time. Practice at your job. A lot of times we practice more at our, at our job sites than we practice at church. And we give more practice to the, the world than we give to the Lord. We don't give up on our jobs, do we? Why are we going to give up on church? Why are we going to give up on God? Why are we going to give up on praying or reading the word? No. Let's begin to practice again. Let's, let's get back into practice. See, there are, and practice is also kind of like, Discipline. Come on, amen. No one likes discipline in this place, right? We don't like to discipline ourselves, right? <laughs> a man of God once told me this. He said, David, persist in your calling until you are clearly told to do something else. Many people, man, I don't know, many people are hearing God all the time. Like, God told me to do this, and God told me to do that, and God told me to go over here. And, man, God speaks to you more than he speaks to me, Amen. But no, you practice. You discipline what you have been given. You stay in your spot. You stay in your seat. You stay in the Lord. You practice. Man, you stay where God has you. You practice right there until God tells you to, to go on. Amen. It's practice. Discipline. See, discipline sets you up for your next win. I ain't I got too many amens on that. Amen. It's all right. I'm going to talk about it anyways. There are two types of discipline. The first one's from God. Hebrews 12, 11, For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Trained by it. We are trained in pain sometimes. We are trained by the pain. We're, we're trained by the things that come into our life. We're trained by the pain. And that's from God. God sends that our way so he could train us, so he can mold us, so he can shape us, and he can also deliver us. Amen. We are trained by that pain. Even when I'm losing, I'm winning, baby. Now, even when I feel like I'm losing, I, I, I take some L's, but hey, that's all right because I'm winning anyways. I'm learning from my mistakes. I'm learning when I lose. I'm learning something valuable that school can't teach me, that, but life is teaching me, that the word of God is teaching me. Um, though I may be losing sometimes, I am winning. 
And the, and the second is not only discipline us from God, but also we have to discipline ourselves. Woo! This is going to be a hard one right here. 1 Corinthians 9.27, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others I might be disqualified. I don't want to be disqualified. I want to leave a mark. I don't remember the quitters. I don't remember the losers. I remember the winners. I remember those that left the mark. And I want to be like Paul says in here, after I have preached even this message right here, that I don't disqualify myself. Self-discipline. A great pianist once said this, if I neglect one day practicing, I notice. Two days, my friends notice. Three days, everyone notices. We notice when you're practicing. We know when, when, when you're practicing, when you're coming to church, we know it. We know when you're giving because we see you blessed. We know when you're practicing. We know when you're reading the word. When you're, man, when you're praying, we see the practice. Don't go without practice for three days, amen. See, as Matthew makes his way to the piano, come on, I know he practices like every day, amen. Right? I got you, man. Huh? See, spiritual conflicts, battles, they're actually blessings. And the adversary, come on, it, it, you, ever, you ever have a workout partner? I'm going to talk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about Pastor Miller, amen. <laughs> you ever had a workout partner? Man, that someone that pushes you? He keeps on, hey, come on, come on, Dave. But I remember those, man, I, man. This man of God right here, Pastor Miller. I just wanted to hike up Cow's Mountain, Pastor. I don't want to go through CrossFit. <laughs> but, man, every weekend last year, man, we would we'd be at that. Either last year or before, I need to go again. <laughs> but, man, we would, every, every week, that was part of my, when I was going through some things, that was my release. I would just, man, climb up that mountain. I need, to, I need to climb some mountains. I need to get some winds under my belt. I need to feel good about myself. I need to, I need to, I need to get a hold of this. And I told this man, he said, hey, let's go. Let's go to Cow's Mountain. Let's go to Potato Chip. But he brought the weights. He brought the weight vest. He brought the cowbells or dumbbells. <laughs> kettlebell, kettlebell. I feel like a dumbbell sometimes. <laughs> Man, the, the kettlebells, come on. The bag, he has the bag. Uh, and man, he would, we would go up there. And he would be like, come on, you guys can do it. You guys can make it. Come on, man, come on, one more step. One more. And he would always challenge us. He would always push us. He would say, no, don't give up. See, I will remember him. Because... It's not the people that told us to quit will remember. Some people are telling you to quit. Some people are telling you to give up. Some people are telling you to throw in the towel. You know what, just leave. But you know what, we're not going to remember those people. But we're going to remember the people that are in our lives challenging us to pray. Hey, come on, pray about it. Man, seek the Lord about it. You're going to remember the people that pushed you. You're going to remember the people that challenged you. You're going to remember the people that spoke the word of God to you. You're going to remember those that spoke the word of God to us. See, as we all stand, the warriors, the warriors of old, the, you know, the Genghis Khans and the Persians and the 300, hoorah, you know, all that. Warriors of old, when they conquered, when they conquered other nations and other fierce warriors, they believed that their spirit, that their power, when they defeated their foe, would come upon them. And they would be even more powerful. And today, that may not, may not be the case. But when you say no to sin, when you're victorious in that temptation, you get a, a double victory. 
and you become more than a conqueror. We're not just conquerors, but when we come over our pain and we see the promise and as we practice, we become more than conquerors. There's a more than spirit that God deposits in our life because we're more than just sons. We're more than, we're children of God. We're God's chosen. We're God's chosen, God's anointed. We're not anybody being any, we're not just anybody, but we're God's. And this morning, maybe you find yourself drifting from your mark. See, that race in the ancient times was a long race around the Colosseum. They would, man, they would go to training 10 months, and they'd have to show up at that Colosseum a month before the, even the race to, to qualify. And as those ancient Greeks, as they would run, they would keep their eyes on the mark. That mark, my friend, is the finish line. There are finish lines in our lives. There is one big finish line that we all should strive towards, that final mark of the heavenly calling, the, of, of heaven. But while we're on earth, there's marks. There's callings, there's destinies, there's things that God wants you to do. He, he wants you to leave a mark, not just to get to heaven, but also leave a mark in our families, to leave a mark in our marriages. So even, man, they, you know, they, they want to give up. They're falling out of love. My, my, it's not about falling in. It's not, it, it, that's drifting. We need to drift back to God. We need to look, look back and say, man, there's the mark. I need to get back to the mark. And as your, as your eyes are closed and your hands are raised, say, you know what? God, I, I want to remember the pain. I, I forgot how far you took me from. I want to remember the promise. I want to strive for that promise. I want to get a promise. Or maybe say, you know what? I need to practice. I need to get in there. I need to do the things I once used to do. I, I, I'm, la I'm, I'm lacking right now. I'm, I'm holding back right now. And, and if that's any of you, if this message, message spoke to you in any of those areas, I want you to come into this altar. This altar is open. Come on, let's, let's get a hold of God. Let's leave a mark. If you want to leave a mark for your family, I want you to come up here. If you want to leave a